Are we now re ready for closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you may begin, Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Your Honor. Here we are at the end of the case, and everything I told you that would come true has. I told you that the government is going to have one witness. I told you what he's going to say. And I told you that they're not going to have any evidence of anything. Exactly what happened. Welcome to the most terrifying case I have ever tried. One man took this witness stand earlier today. And said what he had done, what he saw heard, what he smelled, etc. With absolutely no corroboration, no evidence, nothing. Nothing but pure hearsay. We never even learned throughout this trial is even certified to administer the breath test. To this moment, we have no idea. He never talked about the certifications that police officers usually receive. And if he got one, if he is actually certified by the state to use this machine, we have no idea. We don't have a ticket from this machine that it usually spits out after it goes through the calibration process. Oh, and by the way, was this machine calibrated? We don't know. We don't have any records to support whether or not the machine was calibrated in the first place. As a matter of fact, we heard that the officer could not confirm that the machine was calibrated. When Mr. Fernandez asked him, can you tell me, is this machine calibrated? I don't know. Please blow into it for me. We don't have the ticket that will state, did or did not Mr. Fernandez, in fact, refuse or not refuse this machine? Or is it just the words of one man? The officer even admitted on the stand, and you all heard it, I heard it. He said, Mr. Fernandez may not have been under the influence. The question from Mr. Wilson was, could he or could he have not been, or may he or may he have not been under the influence? And the man said, yes, that's correct, if you all remember it. I asked him, you testified in this case before, haven't you? Yes, I have. And you said there was no second officer, Officer Peepool. I did say that, but I'd like to correct my testimony. I have since learned, after reviewing paperwork, because I obviously don't have an independent memory, of the events that transpired on August 21st of 2020, 
I had to review a piece of paper and having been questioned by me on that day, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, there was, there was another man there. Yes. Yes, there was. Officer People was there. Okay. Where is he? We're back to the one man. Remember, we don't have a burden. The government chose not to bring him in today. He was literally, we'll talk about cameras in a second, he was literally the only living, breathing human being that could have corroborated the state's case. He could have confirmed or denied what he saw, what he smelled, what he heard, what he talked about. Just one man. And this man said, when I finally got him to admit, that field sobriety test should not be given to individuals over the age of 65. So he was trained. Mr. Fernandez was 65 on the night of his arrest, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. He's 67 today. This was two years ago. Even according to this man, From the moment he pulled Mr. Fernandez over, he said, pulled him over at 9.26 p.m. He needed he need a refresher. He couldn't remember the time, which is okay. You know, it's been two years. I'm not going to hold that against him. And I asked him, what time did you arrest him? He said, 9.37. 11 minutes. From the moment the stop occurred to the moment that Mr. Fernandez is in shackles. A complete DUI investigation, a full conversation, the entirety of the field sobriety tests, all conducted in a matter of 11 minutes. Must be a new world record. He even at some point, I remember he was reviewing some, uh, he had some paper at his table and, and I asked the judge to have that removed from him because he's not allowed to be reading stuff. He has to testify from memory. Everybody knows that. Otherwise it's hearsay. I don't know who, what, what is he reading? Like, what is he Did somebody else write it? Did he write it? Like, it's, it's hearsay. Several times he had no independent recollection during direct examination of what happened that night. He never confirmed that the gentleman sitting at our desk is in fact the person that he arrested. Something I have never seen before. I still don't know if he remembers that Mr. Fernandez, other than the fact that he's sitting right next to me, which is the dead giveaway. But if he wasn't, I don't know if we'd be able to pick him out of a lineup. He never testified to that. Then he said this magical phrase. Every single person that I have ever taken to that jail, after they blow into my magical device, they were always .08 or greater. Objection, Your Honor. I don't believe that was Shannon's testimony. Testimony? I'd love to see the word magic. There was
was a moment um, towards the end, I believe, of redirect. We have it in our notes. When the question was posed to uh, Mr. Oliver, uh, the question was. Well, it was a long moment. It was during the uh, response to the. Uh, based on their training experience, uh, Mr. Oliver's response was as long as they were over 21. I arrested them, took them back, they've always flown above a point oh eight. The words magical machine, no. I do recall that. Oh. Uh, take out the word magical and I'll allow the rest. Okay. Thank you. To rephrase, he never said magical machine. Those are my words. Uh, but he said anyone over the age of 21 that I have ever arrested in my 15 year career and brought them in and they blow, I'm always right, essentially. They're always 0.08 or greater. I have not once, he tells us, ever been wrong. Never. That's what he said. A hundred times out of a hundred, a thousand times out of a thousand, ten thousand times out of ten thousand. Voir dire, I asked you a question in jury selection. I said, why is video important? And I got some very good answers. You know, it's unbiased. It's, uh, uh, it tells the truth. It states the facts. Um, it tells it how it is. I believe Mr. Wilson said that. Um, the, the potential juror, Mr. Wilson, not this Mr. Wilson. And what I think is the, one of the most terrifying precepts about this case is that we're talking about the government. We're talking about an entity that has endless potentials of power, as we talked about in opening statements. And that government has a responsibility. They have a duty. Now, what is their duty? To protect the citizenry from outside forces, you know, have military, etc. I'm sure, on the streets, to have the police force to protect and serve. Mr. Wilson might disagree, but that's what it says on the, on the cars, and that's what we'll at least like to believe in. But they also have a further duty that if they choose to bring accusations in a court of law, a respectable entity, such as this one right here, they have to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest standard in the land. And one of the easiest things to do that if they truly have an individual that they believe to be under the influence of alcohol, because the symptoms of being under the influence are very easy to detect. You would be able to, if there was video, you'd be able to watch the video and see it with your own eyes, hear it with your own ears, and determine independently of the one man whether or not Mr. Fernandez was under the influence of alcohol. That's their job. Okay, so the man testified I did not have a body camera of any kind. I did not have a dash camera. Okay, we got that from him. Why? Because it's his own personal equipment. Do I believe him? I don't know. It's up to you to decide. Well, what about all the other potentials for video? Mr. Fernandez testified he didn't see any cameras. Well, no offense to my client, I don't think he's an expert in detecting hidden cameras or anything of that nature. Especially when it comes to coming to a government building where you are about to be processed by a police officer, um, questioned, uh, given, uh, read the implied consent as he has testified, given a breath test, this is the moment where the government has eyes in the sky, if you will, the cameras, that are looking down and recording everything that's happening. Mr. Wilson had all the power in the world to bring such evidence before you today. 
Because there is, I, I just don't believe that there, that there's absolutely not a single camera between the stop and the end. I don't Attention, believe. Attention, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes. Mr. Wilson failed to introduce any video evidence. Counsel has not received any video evidence. We don't have any video evidence. The court has not seen any video evidence. I think my statement was very, very fair. I'm stating my opinion. It's closing argument. I can tell, I can give them a summary of what I feel about the case. I'll allow it. I think you can state that. Thank you. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that from the moment that Mr. Fernandez was picked up to the moment that he was hauled off to the cell for the night or whatever, that there was not a single video camera, not one, on his person. That just blows the imagination. It goes beyond the imagination. We, um, we heard there was a gentleman in the back during uh, jury selection, he sat somewhere in the middle. I remember he said, there are cameras in Sally Port, uh, the jail room, the intoxilizer room, the cell. Somebody else said, I think it was Ms. Uh, Geor Georgina, uh, I forget her last name. Uh, she said there might be video uh, in the cell, outside the jail, and then we talked about car and body uh, and potentially a personal recording which we don't have in this case, as Mr. Fernandez did not record this interaction on his own personal cell phone. Um, one man. They're asking you to put a black mark, a permanent criminal record on another individual based on the testimony of one person. Like I said, this is by far the most terrifying case I have ever had. The United States of America is, is built and has been based on the concept of freedom, the concept of innocence, until a jury of their peers determines whether or not the government has proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt. The highest standard in the land, as we discussed, because in civil cases, guardianship and conservatorship cases, your freedom is not at stake. Today it is. And I submit to you that their burden has not just not been met, hasn't even come close to the bar that our forefathers have set, excuse me, have set for the government to protect the people from actions such as the ones that are attempting to be um, happening today. So I ask, when you go back to deliberate, you find Mr. Fernandez not guilty May it please the court, Mr. Foreman and Mr. Bates, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Thank you all very much for being here today. Uh, I told you whenever we started that I would try to uh, introduce the evidence as comprehensively but also as expeditiously as I can. Um, you have heard a lot today. Uh, and I just want to highlight a couple of the things that you have heard. Um, 
Shannon did a great job. Shannon is recalling events from a traffic stop over two years ago whenever he's had hundreds of traffic stops in between. Shannon testified to you that he pulled the gentleman over because he was urinating on the outside of the car wash and then alcohol came up once he gets up to the vehicle. Shannon testified that he smelled alcohol and that's why this began. Now that was verified by the defendant's statement that he had been drinking that night. Uh, the defendant took the stand, he admitted that he had been drinking that night. Furthermore, his wife testified that she hadn't been drinking, and Mr. Fernandez also testified that his wife had not been drinking. So ask yourselves whenever you go into the jury room. If Shannon smelled alcohol and the wife hadn't been drinking, who was the alcohol coming off of? Moreover, Mr. Fernandez admitted that he was drinking that night. Shannon's suspicions were confirmed by Mr. Fernandez's own words. Um, in a minute, you're going to get these exact jury instructions right here. Um, read over them carefully. Uh, please consider them carefully. Uh, but I want to print out, or I want to point out instruction number one. And instruction number one says, and, and this is really the only question for you all, that in this county, on or about August the 21st of 2020, and within 12 months before the issuance of the citation against him, Mr. Fernandez, one, operated a motor vehicle. No question. That's an easy one. He definitely operated a motor vehicle. And two, and that while doing so, he was under the influence of alcohol. He was at his brother's for a party. He was there for several hours. There was a cooler of beer. You've heard his testimony. You've heard what he admitted to the officer that night. Draw your own conclusion. We've given you all the tools today to reach a verdict. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wilson. And with the bailiff who will take the jury back to the deliberation room, please come to the bench. If you would raise your right hand, do you swear that you will keep the jurors together and suffer no person to speak to or communicate with them on any subject connected with the trial and that you will not do so yourself? I do. Here is the jury instructions for the jury and if you would take them in the back to the deliberation room.